no one's gonna help us tonight. Come on! This is your emergency broadcast system announcing the commencement of the annual purge. At the siren, all crime, including murder, will be legal for 12 hours. All emergency services will be suspended. Your government thanks you for your participation. Welcome to Shy Break. Welcome to Shy Break. North side, south side. Welcome to Shy Break. East side, west side. Welcome to Shy Break. Out in the streets, they call it murder. Out in the streets, they call it murder. it from the violence this holiday weekend. At least 11 people were killed, 60 others wounded in shooting since Thursday. There were also six police-involved shootings. Two of those shot by police were teenagers who later died. CBS 2's Marissa Bailey is live at police headquarters with the latest. Good morning, Marissa. Hey, good morning, Chris and Aaron. You know, this is not the way you want to start a Monday morning at all. And just to give you an idea of how many shootings happened across the city, from 2.30 Sunday afternoon until 3.30 in the morning, 29 people were shot. That's the majority of the shootings from the weekend. The problem with all of this is that, as you mentioned, Chicago police are also involved in some of these shootings. Violent weekend in Chicago has left 11 people dead and 60 wounded in shootings across the city. Chicago Police Superintendent Gary McCarthy is addressing the issue as well as recently seized firearms at this hour. Fox 32's political editor Mike Flannery is live with more. Michael. Well, Corey, uh, Police Superintendent Gary McCarthy is still speaking inside the 10th District uh, Police uh, uh, Station here on the west side at uh, Ogden and Christiana. He says that uh, Chicago police had a plan over this bloody 4th of July weekend. Nonetheless, as you indicated, Corey, there was uh, a uh, count of casualties that could have been from Afghanistan or Iraq, but it was here in Chicago, a place some have dubbed Chirac. The uh, most interesting uh, aspect of this, as we have seen so many times, there were, uh, there, there were literally a small handful of shootings on the north side, four on the north side, and police say in Englewood alone, one neighborhood on the south side, there were three times as many, uh, and the police superintendent is chalking that up to guns. He says if he is asked... Uh, about the biggest difference between Chicago and New York City, where he grew up and where he was a cop for 20 years. He said it is the proliferation of guns. The police superintendent also addressed the, uh, the fact that there were apparently eight police officers who discharged their weapons uh, uh, or who had themselves fired upon by offenders. The police superintendent, again, rattling off uh, all of the details of these incidents, in many cases the offenders, uh, felons, uh, some out on parole, some out on bond, and these offenders, uh, the uh, police superintendent indicated, should not have been on the street. He said many of these incidents should not have happened at all because the suspects in those incidents should have been in the county jail or in state prison. Corey, back to you. Good evening, Jackie. The alderman was uh, right in front of this store here. He had just got done talking with the store owner. It was about 3.30 in the afternoon. That's when he said he heard those shots being fired. Happened about a block down the street here. He said when he heard the shots fired, he looked up. He saw a young man firing indiscriminately into a crowd, then take off on foot. Having never been witnessing a gun being fired during the commission of a crime, uh, I'll tell you one thing, I didn't notice too much more than just the gun itself, um, but I did notice that uh, it, it, was some, it was being fired by someone who appeared very young, probably younger than my 17-year-old son. The victim was 28-year-old Will Lewis. He died from a gunshot wound to the back. According to family, he and his wife had just moved to Chicago a year ago from Wisconsin and into the Rogers Park neighborhood two weeks ago. He was set to start a new photography job within days. Apparently, from all accounts, was not someone involved in criminal activity. He wasn't uh, a gang member or associated with a gang member. 
it sounds tragically that he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Lewis was standing near this bus stop when police say someone walked up to him and started firing. The alderman says after Lewis went down, the shooter kept firing into a group of another young people before running away. But Lewis was the only one hit. Just one of many shot over the weekend. Over the 4th of July holiday, more than 80 people were hit by bullets. Just, I think, is, is demonstration that we have too many guns on the street. Uh, we have conditions that breed violence, uh, poverty. And uh, that lethal combination of guns and poverty and a sense of alienation and hopelessness among our youth creates this sort of, uh, this sort of violence. And then I looked outside and I saw a lot of commotion. So when I had ran across the street, the first body I saw was Lil Sam. His was right there. And I saw the gunshot wound that was on the side of his head. And when I looked away, I saw Malik land there. And he was holding his leg because he had got shot in his leg. And when, by the time I got across the street, Lil Sam was he was already gone. And it was a lot of more boys, and then the, the way the blood splattered from the cell, it was just like water the way it poured, poured from his body. I told them for to stay right there with us, but they had walked to the stove. We were just with them. You couldn't have saved them, though, baby. Murder skyrocketing in the city of Chicago. What's going on? It's three times more uh, deadly in Chicago than anywhere in the nation. It really starts at home because you've got a lot of people that are you know, born you know, into families without fathers. Chicago gets millions of dollars each year to fight this. Where's the money going? Money is not enough. Uh, it's going to take family to family, block to block, to not only bring the crime down, but raise the value of life. What's this neighborhood like? Confused. Desperate desperate for resources. I don't know where the resources are going, but it's not coming in our community. It's World War 17 over here. If you get caught in the crossfire, just hope you make it out here. We've got to do more graduations than we do funerals to turn this thing around. You'll be lucky enough if you could just make it across the street to the store and come back. You got, you know, President Obama's house right here. You go six blocks over. You got, you got shootings over here. You got four blocks over this way. You got shootings over that way. Five shots were fired. <laughs> You know, you're talking about semi-automatic guns, you're talking about high-power guns. These kids are holding some very dangerous weapons. We've got to stop referring to people as African-American, Hispanic-American. These are American kids, and they're being slaughtered by other American kids. Obama did a lot of community organizing there. Did that work? Well, I never heard of the guy until he ran for Senate. He did a great job, and then he moved on, and someone else took his place. Obama, my man. You know what I'm saying? I mess with Obama, but at the same token, it's more that he could be, it's more he could be done. Most of the politicians that are from from Chicago, just like the Trayvon Martin, you know, case. You know, you had Bobby Rush, you know, you know, on the, on the House floor in a hoodie when people are dying in this di district. Just because someone wears a hoodie does not make them a hula. I think that's kind of hypocritical, and that's my, you know, honest opinion. Turn around and say he's gonna sign an executive order to create to create a uh, minimum wage. For, for federal services only. But what about the rest of us who don't have jobs at all? You know, he hasn't addressed that issue. How is he going to create jobs for us? How can they create jobs for us if they don't bring us into the market? How can they create jobs for us if we're not at the table with them? So the president, to, to look at what this president just did, is really a shame because he didn't address any or none of 
the problems in our community. And that state of the union was not a state of the union. It was a state of the position on how the same old people is going to continue to get the same. Generalizing all the problems, the issues, and making it just real fuzzy and real, you know, real, you know, real warm. We might well just had a cup of cocoa after he got through, because we didn't get nothing out of this, but another real fuzzy, warm, you know, beautiful statement. And everybody get up that was that was the powers that be get up and eat and we all go home hungry again. What Obama did was perpetuate a reality, perpetuate a narrative that is so far removed from what is really happening to us as poor people, as black people, and as young people. Protesters join justice for Trevon rallies around the country. Community activists here in Chicago, where carnage is a daily occurrence, ask, where is the national outrage for black on black violence? We saw her put in an ambulance, but we didn't see her face or nothing. Just minutes before she was just playing, riding her bicycle. Yeah, and then she, saw, she really got shot. And then, she, then all the police and the ambulance came. You scared? Yes, I am. A tragic but all too typical Friday night as shots ring out across Chicago. Two men killed, seven others wounded, including a six-year-old girl as neighbors, including young children, watch in horror. I want to grow up and be a scientist, but I don't want people to die with well quickly in the ways. And I feel ba real bad for her. Him seeing all this, his dream's not going to come true if people keep shooting kids. It's not. It's not. It's sad. It's real sad. Part of the tragedy of the violence here in Chicago is the collateral damage. Tonight, a six-year-old girl who was partying right in front of her home, riding her bicycle, was shot in the chest and gravely wounded, despite law enforcement on almost every corner in this neighborhood. Now, four people were killed and over 40 people wounded this weekend as a wave of violence struck Chicago. And among those killed, an 11-year-old girl. Shmia Adams was shot and killed inside of the first floor for her, of her home on late Friday night as she and her friends played at a slumber party. Adams was hit by a stray bullet after someone shot a gun outside. Police think that it came from an incident in a vacant lot across the street from her apartment. And family and friends mourned her death on Sunday. After this round of violence, public and community leaders are calling for children, her friends, Lord. The Roman, the church, and that miss her smiling face. And, and what affects us on the west side affects the south side. We also have to examine what I call the entertainment industrial complex and the hip hop industry mm -hmm. and its projection of yep. young black men and the images of who young black men are. They Agreed. are creating negative role models for young black men that are often in. So we thank God for him. We thank God for all of the fathers who are still in the lives of others. But we must challenge those who are not. We must show our brothers that they can put down their guns and pick up their books. That they can fight back against the obstacles that are holding them back and that they shouldn't step into this trap that has been set for them. You know, some think it's a conspiracy. I don't know whether there's a few people in the back room uh, planning to, uh, uh, to eliminate the black male or lock him up in the, in, in the institutions to make money off of him. I don't know if that's the case, but I know there's a trap waiting on your behind. And 
And if you walk into it, they are going to make some money off of you. They are going to lock you up. They are going to remove the jobs from your community. Replace those jobs with guns and drugs for you to kill yourselves with. And then those left standing, they put them in the prison industrial complex and paid many of them a dollar a day to make products that are sold on the open market. Making money off the misery that has been created as a result of a failed education system and economic deprivation in your community. that this country, not going particular, I'm not going to mess with Chicago's education system, don't know enough about it. I know you all close more schools than any place in the country. I know you put uh, uh, opposing gangs together in the same school. Like Detroit. Close 24 schools at one time in one day. And so I'm not going to get involved in that. That's all things. I'm going to make my business my job. <laughs> but it is a failed education system that has contributed significantly to all the problems in our community. Yes. Put those two together. The misery of a failed education system. Economic deprivation by the major corporations who've moved out of our community. And we know that education, even if they move out and we can get there by bus or by car, if we can't compete for those resources and jobs, all the transportation in the world won't help. Because this country is based on competition. The competition is based primarily on those who have the best education, the best uh, uh, inspiration, and the strongest will. And so I'll get back to you, brothers, and I'm going to wrap it up. I've heard poverty. I've heard unemployment. All of these things seem to point to rate, the intersection of race, gender, and class as well. Many of the people who are dying here are young black men. These are the people who are in gangs. These are the people who are dying. These are people who are also committing the crimes to some extent. How, how prevalent is, is, is that intersection between race, class, and gender when we talk about death in, in Chicago and really around the country? Well, I mean, we're in America, right? And... Dr. Martin Luther King said it best in the 1966 uh, when he said, America is the biggest purveyor of violence in the world, right? <laughs> so here we are 40 years later, underemployment, over-incarceration, too many police who view us as inhuman and dispensable, and, and as well, you know, the education sy system in urban America has been decimated by charter schools and by people like Arnie Duncan, who come from Chicago. We need to look at also, how are these guns getting in our communities? Right. Do we have factories? Are we making the guns? You know, and I think we also have to look at these young people as people that have lost hope in their politicians, in their elders, in their communities, and are turning to violence in a country that perpetrates violence every day. And that violence in this country is often rewarded, just not to these young people. The fact is, we know that economic deprivation failed public schools. Industrial prison, industrial complex is making money and putting our brothers back in slavery, making money off of them. Right, right. And by the way, this is volunteer slavery. Yeah. <laughs> this is volunteer slavery. And you imagine what Harry Tucker <laughs> And so the challenge is for our brothers to stand up and fight back. Brothers, we are so tough on the street. Yes. Go out here and get to the corner with this twisted sense of manhood. You think your manhood comes from the gun on your hip? Because you think you can, you think you die? Oh, I know the mentality. 
I can give a life or take a life. That's God. You think your manhood is tied up in your in your growing? And so the more babies you produce, the more respect on the street. There's a thing now called spreading my seed. Like it's a big deal I can spread my seed. Producing babies that you can't take care of. So it's not just all the system. It's not just failed education system. It's a failed mentality. A mentality that causes you to destroy yourselves and fight yourselves instead of the real enemy. Who is the real enemy? Not white folks, not the government. Not the real enemy is anybody who will stand in your way of progress and fighting back. And this is no time, brothers, to lay down. It's time to throw down. We gotta throw down. Get out here on the corner and talk up. I'm the man. I want my respect. Nobody don't respect you unless you take care of those babies that you are producing. Nobody's going to respect you. Walk around with your gun. I'm the man. I'm the man. But you, you, I, I know I have a little problem here, but I got a little bit of security. We might not be a problem. But I'm not scared. And did everything they did. Organization that I'm with, the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement, on July 9th, we released a report that showed in America every 40 hours, and now it's every 36 hours, a black man, woman, or child is murdered by a police officer or by a self appointed vigilante or a security guard. $1.2 million. That's reportedly. The amount of money the city of Chicago will pay the family of a teenager shot and killed by an off-duty police officer. Eyewitness News reporter Jessica D'Onofrio joins us now live from City Hall with details on this story. Jessica. Good morning, Jose. Corey Harris was a Diet High School student and a standout athlete, but he was gunned down almost five years ago by a Chicago police officer. Now the city is digging deep to pay out his family. Harris was shot by an off-duty police officer back in September of 2009 near 69th and Everhart. Today, a city finance committee will consider using $1.2 million of taxpayer money to compensate his family. Chicago police claimed at the time that the off-duty officer saw Harris shooting at someone and that the teen ran when the officer chased him with his car. Police say when Officer Darren Wright caught up with Harris, the teenager pointed a gun at him forcing the officer to shoot in self-defense. But the Harris family later filed a lawsuit claiming Officer Wright was wildly firing a series of shots at a group of Diet High School students, which included Harris. An autopsy revealed Harris died of a gunshot wound to the back. Harris was the father of an infant daughter and the captain of the baseball and basketball teams at Diet High School, leaving many to wonder how he could be a criminal. The city settlement is just the latest in a series of costly payouts stemming from alleged police misconduct. Meanwhile, the City Corporation Council has not explained fully why City Hall is agreeing to this payout, but we do expect to find out more later on this morning. City Finance Committee expected to take this up at 11 a.m. We have a lot of programs, but you have youth that are sitting there on the street, and if they try to get out of a game, or try to escape, there's no one to protect them. So are there any programs that you know of that will, if you have kids on the street and they want to get off, 
um, you got 30 a program seconds. that might be able to protect them when they get out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. There are safe zones you should have. If you don't have them, you should establish them. And where that should be, the best program in our community is the church, where our sisters are giving their tithes and offering. So I think we should get something in return for the investment that we're, that we're making in these houses of worship. And that is to open those doors after school, in the evening, safe houses, safe areas where the brothers who do want to leave, they can go from their home to the church. Now, I'm not sure about how we can stop them being assaulted or otherwise uh, um, victimized on the way from home to the church, on the way from school to home. I'm not sure how that can happen. That's a police burden, and we have to uh, put more emphasis on uh, uh, uplifting our community with uh, police protection than just coming down on our community. When, when, you, when you when you think about your own experience, how does that make you how does that make you think about what's going on in Chicago right now, where many people are being paralyzed, they're being shot, and, and all, they're often being killed? Right. I mean, the stuff, the, the stuff that goes on here is 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 driven by a lot of different things. You got poverty. You got kids, kids raising kids. The lack of the lack of jobs. The lack of uh, education so it's just a lot of, it's a lot of pain a lot of hurt is being passed that's being passed down so you know not having not not having ways out they're they're using they're using guns to to explain themselves and use that as, as the choice of reasoning you know you look at you look at things that happen if your friends if your friends keep getting killed all around you you're going to protect yourself so that's that's what the kids look at it as they lost hope there's no tomorrow we live for today now, now, uh, uh, thank you. For, I mean, that, that Father Flager, I mean, he's speaking to some really important issues that you started to talk about. One is obviously access to guns, right? And the other is that, co that collective sense of despair. C can you speak right. to that? Well, I, I think he, he just named it right, you know, right on the head. Is, and I think Rosa talked about it. When you see there's a distrust of police, you live in communities where you fear you're not cared about by the government, by the city, by the administration, by the police department, there is this hopelessness. You have the, the, the lack of jobs. You have uh, this proliferation of guns. Why we have military assault weapons allowed in this country, but we won't allow them someplace else. And why we don't make gun people responsible. Sure, have your gun, but be responsible for your gun. We don't stop these gun runners. We don't stop drug proliferation. We have a perfect storm for why we're having violence. You have all these conditions like they are, and then you have people hopeless on top of it. And gun now, in a violent country, we're a violent country. We've taught violence. We glorify violence, whether it's TV, whether it's a radio, or whether it's our government helping revolutions around the world. So then, why, so, so then where's the face? Why in hopeless communities that people turn to guns? And it, the, as young brothers tell me on the street, hey, my presumption is everybody got a gun, so I pull mine before he pulls his. That's the climate, and we're going to continue to see this thing exist until we structure as a country and change the conditions that I think create this perfect. A gun. I got a gun. I got a gun. He got a gun. He got a gun. Everybody got guns. <laughs> we, we have to first, you know, a lot of these kids need therapy. They they see it happening every day, and you see it every day. They 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 become accustomed to it. You know, no one no one sits the kid down and tell them what's really happening. Let them know how serious it is. You got six and seven year olds that 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 witness their uncles, fathers, and mothers being stabbed and shot. So they they don't have the outreach. So when they as they as they get older, they they get accustomed to it. There's no good or bad, it's just news. Raise your awareness, be easy, relax, but don't snooze. Rest in the presence of the gift and the curse. Enjoy the choice, of spectate, or contribute a verse. There's no good or bad, it's just news. Raise your awareness, be easy, relax, but don't snooze. Rest in the presence of the gift and the curse. Enjoy the choice, of spectate, or contribute a verse. Fill in the name of, fill in the blank. Seeking the calls from my pursuit of the bank. I'm thinking money is a means to achieve my desire. The prize please when I forget what I seek and admire. All I see is an illusion, intangible material enveloped in confusion. I've analyzed the miracle, placing faith in external objects and circumstances. Ultimately crunches my joy like avalanches. My peace of mind's affected inversely. 
by my expectations Getting caught in controversy If I focus on acceptance and choose to be contented I might improve my balance to keep my feet cemented Indifferently compassionate, off the scale but accurate Grotesquely immaculate, we digitally capture it Synchronized random events, never ending shuffle Slow down, peace be still, don't forget to hustle There's no good or bad, it's just news Raise your awareness, be easy, relax but don't snooze Rest in the presence of the gift and the curse Enjoy the choice of spectator Contribute a verse. There's no good or bad, it's just news. Raise your awareness, be easy, relax, but don't snooze. Rest in the presence of the gift and the curse. Enjoy the choice of spectator, contribute a verse. Yo, this race got me out of breath, got my knees weary, keep my feet to this track. Can the universe hear me screaming out loud? With all these devils running in me, slipping down the wrong lanes, had me feeling kind of dreary, but fuck that. Yo, it's all information. Leave myself to a clearer destination, so I won't hate that girl. Who tried to break my heart I'll just accept and embrace the uncertainty of dark The things I can't know Change the things I can Won't put my heart into other people's hands I'ma focus on myself The good type of selfish Meditate, cultivate what real wealth is Mistakes, pains, stuck in indecision Love, joy, fantasy, a balanced living Take it all in and then peace you'll be given Cause for no one will this world stop, stop spinning There's no good or bad, it's just news Raise your awareness, be Easy, relax, but don't snooze. Rest in the presence of the gift and the curse. Enjoy the choice of spectator, contribute a verse. There's no good or bad, it's just news. Raise your awareness, be easy, relax, but don't snooze. Rest in the presence of the gift and the curse. Enjoy the choice of spectator, contribute a verse. Every now and then, gotta escape the booby traps. Alluding conversations, some provocations, some moody saps. These fruity cats got me dishing out juicy slaps. The goofy chaps got me feeling like you relax. Don't do it. If you try it, it'll be your right. Just cause I'm quiet. Don't assume that I'ma buy it. Them wolf tickets is selling. And all the lies that you tell it. Might get you catching the swelling. Or 50 holes in your mouth. Every now and then, gotta escape the booby traps. Looting conversations, some provocations, some moody saps. These fruity cats got me dishing out juicy slaps. The goofy chaps got me feeling like, dude, relax. Don't do it. If you try it, it'll be your right. Just cause I'm quiet. Don't assume that I'ma buy it. Them wolf tickets is selling. And all the lies that you tell it. Might get you catching the swelling or 50 holes in your melon there's no good or bad it's just news raise your awareness be easy relax but don't snooze rest in the presence of the gift and the curse enjoy the choice of spectator contribute a verse there's no good or bad it's just news raise your awareness be easy relax but don't snooze rest in the presence of the gift and the curse enjoy the choice of spectator contribute a verse true life 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 real tea come on Check one two. You ain't no checking. <laughs> it's all connected. I stay in. We all connected. Life affected by divine vibrations. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> tell them. Tell them. What? 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 I'm here to overcome unbelievable odds Tolerating all the faking and the phony facades It strengthens my spirit as I practice patience Faith in abundant blessings Embraced by its fragrance Intending to conquer, succeed and accomplish My destiny determined to live my dreams and polish The jewel of my being Enlightened and seeking Progress and truth even when it seems fleeting Walking up a slippery slope toward the light Struggle to keep my balance and meditate for insight The universe is here for me to master and manipulate While illusion and harmony co Exist and procreate divine dreams of bliss for the children of God. Play your part in the symphony. Sit back and applaud. Realize what you are, who you are. You a star. Evolve yeah. and illuminate. Yeah. Be seen from afar. If it wasn't for the hard times of struggle, I wouldn't have the tough skin, the wind, and the fine lines to muscle. Ride lines and hustle. Core of the beast. What more is a feast? Up roar in the streets. Positive energy. Build and increase. Progress, create a new intense peace. Attract the infinite powerhouse, the source, the universe, manifold, and underlying force. Left the hospital sick and wouldn't trade it for nothing. I'm hated. Doctors doubted I would make it.